when we begin clinical development, we start with a series of, of standard tests, right? Things that measure charge or size, heterogeneity, and potency, and so forth. And then we'll look at 40 or 50 candidate critical quality attributes, and we'll do what we call the presumptive CQI assessment, where we try and determine whether or not those things are likely to have an impact on biological activity, whether they'll affect clearance, whether they might be immunogenic, or whether they may have a special safety concern. And the information for that assessment generally comes from what we know about the molecule from research studies that have been performed or non-clinical studies, or sometimes we have information from related products that's relevant for the, the product that's beginning development. And so we'll do that critical quality attribute assessment as, as a, like a gap assessment to see what, what else needs to be added to the standard list of tests that are used for our, our, our molecules. But then as we go through development, once we have representative material from the final to be commercialized process, we'll go through and, and try and isolate materials that are different from the main form, you know, using chromatography or using chemical methods to synthesize or enrich materials that may be different in some way. And then we can use those materials to run bioassays, uh, to test them in models for uh, clearance like FCRN binding. Uh, or to do other tests that are needed to try and establish whether the material has some special impact to patients right, because it's different from, from the main form. So the usual suspects CQA list has uh, perhaps 40 or 50 characteristics that may need to be uh, considered critical quality attributes. Uh, at the end of the assessment, we usually have in the range of 15 to 20 that are truly considered critical.